In this video, I'll ask how does a capacitor actually work in a circuit? Now we often use the analogy of a circuit as a pipe with water flowing in it. The current is the amount of water, uh, the pressure, how much it's pushed, is the voltage. In that analogy, a capacitor is somewhat like a rubber membrane. When you apply a voltage to it, that pushes a current in, water in for a bit, and the membrane stretches and stretches and stretches. But as it stretches, it pushes more and more back because of its elastic. That's giving a voltage that applies back the other way until eventually the water can flow no further. Uh, the uh, voltage applied, the stress of the stretched membrane, is equal and opposite to the applied pressure. So let's think how that how you describe that in a real circuit. So here we've got a circuit. We've got a uh, voltage source here, a switch, a capacitor, and a resistor. And let's assume that to begin with the capacitor is not charged. What will happen if we close the switch? Well, to make it a bit easier, let's draw all these things lined up. So we'll rearrange the circuit to have the voltage source the capacitor and the resistor. OK, so we've just closed the switch and what's going to happen? Well, let's sketch the voltages around the loop. So I'll plot voltage against the position around the loop. We'll start off with, say, a voltage here and then it goes up by whatever the voltage source provides. Then stays high. Now because the capacitor has no charge, that means, according to the normal capacitance equation, that uh, capacitance equals Q over V, we can rearrange that voltage equals Q over C. As Q is 0, V is 0. So because there is at the moment no charge in the capacitor, there's going to be no voltage difference across it, it's going to all remain the same. How about the resistor? Well, we need the voltage to come back to where we started, so there must be a voltage drop across the resistor, which is the same as this. Call that, I don't know, the V0, the voltage of the battery. So there must be V0 across there. Because there is a voltage drop across the resistor, there must be a current through it. So that must be equal to I times R. So what's happening when you first close the circuit? We are getting a current flowing through the resistor. OK, but when you've got a current flowing, what's it doing to the capacitor? It means positive charge is flowing into this plate, and out of that plate, so you're going to get negative charge over here. So the charge on the capacitor is steadily building up. As it's building up, that means you're going to be getting a larger and larger voltage across the capacitor. It's going to be harder and harder to push more positive charge in if it's got to fight off all the positive charge that's already in there. So what's going to happen now is it's going to start getting a negative voltage drop across the capacitor, which means there'll only be a smaller I times R across the resistor. So what's happening is, as the capacitor starts charging up, you get more and more voltage here, less and less there, so the current will reduce. You get a smaller and smaller current. But there's still going to be a current, it's just getting smaller. As so even more charge will pile up, so the voltage drop here will get even bigger, so the voltage drop there will get even smaller, till eventually the voltage drop across the capacitor is equal and opposite to the voltage rise across the battery. And no more current will flow. Let's see if we can model that mathematically. Let's go around our loop and add up the voltages. So the voltage is going to increase by V0, the voltage of our voltage source battery. Then it's going to go down by Q over C, and it's going to go down by I over R. And because we've gone all the way around the loop, that must equal zero. OK, well, we can't solve that because we have two unknowns, both the charge and the current, and only one equation. We're going to need another equation. Now, if you remember, current is the rate at which charge flows past a point. 
So the current is going to be dQ by dt. Let's tell you, if there's a current flowing, that's telling you the charge of the capacitor is building up. So we can insert this into here, and we end up with the equation saying that V0 minus 1 over CQ minus R, I'll put the I in here, dQ by dt equals 0. Now the only variable is the charge on the capacitor, so we can solve this. The trouble is it's a differential equation. First order one, not that hard to solve, but uh, that's something you'll do in second year mathematics. For the moment, let's do it using Mathematica. So here's the equation. Q prime t means dq by dt. I've uh, rearranged it slightly, and if we solve that, we find that the charge is equal to c times v0 plus e to the minus t over cr times another constant. So our solution is going to be q equals capacitance times v0 plus e to the minus t over rc times some constant c1, where c1 is an unknown constant of integration. As you've got a first order differential equation with a dq by dt, there's going to be one constant. If it was a d2q by tt squared, there'd be two constants, but only one. Now, the way you work out these constants is by looking at the initial conditions. As we're starting at time t equals 0, with a charge q equals 0, e to the minus 0 is 1, so that tells us that initial 0 equals c v0 plus e to the naught 1 times c1, so c1 equals minus c v0, and our overall equation is going to be that q equals c v0 1 minus e to the minus 1 over c r t. What does that look like? Let's get Mathematica to show us. So we'll give it some uh, values. We'll give a for the, for the capacitance, resistance, and voltage, and then we'll plot things. And you see what's here is that the, the charge starts out at zero, rises up, and then flattens out. If you want to look at the current, we could differentiate this, and so here's a graph of the current versus time. It starts off large and then drops down asymptotes towards zero that never quite gets there. So that's the behaviour of a simple circuit with a capacitor and a resistor.